Um, I would like to say just thank you for being here. Thank you for those of you who are going to watch this on the TEDx channels. We're so glad that you're here as we discuss and talk about I won't need this because I have just the, uh, the old-fashioned deal. Um, I always get asked this question, though, after I speak anywhere, and so I've got to kind of address the elephant in the room, and that is you don't look old enough to speak anywhere. Are, are you, does your mom and your dad know that you're out here? Um, and just so everyone knows, I'm older than 12, I'm, I'm 48, and so... Hey, as I want to dive into creating change, why should you listen to me today? Why, why should you be here? Why should we even be interested in creating change? And it's for two reasons. And the two reasons we should be interested, you should be interested in creating change, is because we will all need the change that is created by somebody else, and we will all need to create change in our own lives. I call them Papa Jack. I was adopted, uh, but he was my grandfather, and he took me in as his own. Um, and he got cancer. I mean, he eventually passed away. Um, but before he passed away, he wanted to come home. And when he came home, the family all got together, and we, we loved Papa Jack, my grandfather. But there were some things that we couldn't handle. There were some things that we couldn't do. There were some changes that we couldn't create because we just didn't have the resources. And there was a great organization called Hospice. I don't know if you've ever heard of them or ever dealt with them, but they came in and did some things that we couldn't do. This hospice, the local hospice, they created change in our lives that we could not. We needed them, and we are forever grateful for an organization like hospice. The reason that we need to be here today, the reason that we need to hear about creating change is because at some point, you and I will need the change that someone created so that we can experience life and life to the full. The second reason is, is at some point in life, you and I are going to need to create change in our own lives. I'll never forget. I remember it um, just like it was yesterday. My daughter was in first grade. And when my daughter was younger, um, she would come home and we'd have this routine. And before she would go to bed every night, she would turn the light off and I'd come in. I'd leave the door cracked and the cat would jump up and, and say goodnight. And I would sit there and I would talk with her about her day. I wanted to make sure I connected with her every day. And I'll never forget this one night in first grade when I sat on the edge of my daughter's bed and I began to ask her about her day. She said it was okay, but I could tell by the tone in her voice that something was drastically wrong. And I said, hey, what's going on? You, you can talk to dad. Dad, mom and dad are here for you. And slowly her voice began to crackle and tears began to flow. And my little first grader began to tell me about how she didn't have any friends at school because my daughter is on the spectrum of autism. And here's what I've discovered, and here's why you watching and you in this room today need to understand how do we create change. Because at some point we'll need change in our own lives that we can't provide, and at some point we're going to want to create change, whether it's in our marriage, in our physical bodies, with our family, or with our children, or in our job, or with our coworkers. Creating change matters if we're going to experience the life that we all want. Now, the word creating change is a pretty cool word, right? When we say that word, we all kind of smile. We all kind of get emotionally amped and we get pumped up. We're like, yes, we're cheering, creating change. And you want to know why? Because when we think about creating change, we have this mental image in our mind. We see a picture of a better world that we live in and a better world that other people get to live in. And it makes us feel good. But the feel good of the phrase of creating change, there's a hidden problem. This feel good covers it. Matter of fact, we discover this problem in the actual word of creating change. I mean, think about create. Create means to make something that doesn't exist or bring into existence. I mean, think about that. That means it isn't there and you've got to bring it in or you've got to create it. This isn't like mowing the lawn or doing the dishes or making a bed. This is solving or creating or doing something, and, and that requires some, some thought and some time and some energy. You've, you've got to create. And then think about the word change. Change. Make different. Alter direction. Have you met human beings? I mean, I've worked with middle school, high school kids, and now I work with adults for a living. It's like herding cats. I mean, anytime you want to alter or change direction, it doesn't happen easily. So think about this. When we come up with the definition of what is it to create change, think about it. 
This is where Vanna White would be very helpful. Creating change to produce what doesn't exist that causes movement in a different direction. How do we create something that doesn't exist that causes people to move in a direction that they're not already moving in? It's a fluffy word that sounds really good that we're all going to cheer today. But the hidden problem, it's very, very difficult. And the reason it's hidden is because when we think about creating change, we think about the great people who brought social justice. We think about the great businesses that brought about innovation. We think about the humanitarian organizations that create great change that we all applaud. I mean, we think about Dr. Martin Luther King and we go, isn't that awesome? We think about Mother Teresa and her love for the poor. We think about Bono and his red campaign when we think about creating change. And when it comes to businesses, we think of innovative companies like Apple. How many of you have an iPhone? It changed the world. Southwest Airlines, when all the other airlines couldn't make it, they made it. They created change in the industry. You think of Amazon. Who would ever think of buying groceries online? Not to mention the humanitarian organizations like Make-A-Wish that help kids experience something that they would never get to experience. Doctors Without Borders, the Wounded Warrior Project, which is relevant to our local community that serves the military community, and Compassion International. We think about these great organizations that create change, and it hides the problem that it's very difficult the reality is Dr. Martin Luther King and Bono and Mother Teresa and the businesses and the organizations we talked about, they are the exception. They are not the role. It is not normal. I did some research on nonprofits and creating change. Did you know that 90% of all of the reported revenue for nonprofit goes to 2.4% of the nonprofits that exist in the United States? Think about that. 90% of the revenue goes to less than 2.5% of the nonprofits. That is a tragic fail rate. We know in the US that there's roughly an 80% business fail rate, and the nonprofit fail rate is even higher. So today, how do we create change? How do we not end up in the pile of tragic failures? How can we become the exception? And here's what I stumbled across. I stumbled across this in my reading and my research. I discovered that those great leaders, those great businesses, those great organizations all had four things in common. And if you and I need to experience and create change in our own lives or to have someone do it, this is something that all of us need to know. And these four things apply to any organization. You can specify it, but all four of these things are needed if you or I or anyone is going to create the change in the world that we want. Now the first is a picture, a clear picture. I mean, to create change, they call it vision. It is a preferred picture of the future. I don't know about you, but my yard, it needs to be mowed. I have a picture of what it looks like to be mowed. And then so I will be able to go out and I will be able to mow it to make it look like the picture in my mind. But I can't tell you the number of people, as I've worked with people for 23 years, who've sought across the table from me with coffee or at a lunch or at a dinner and told me about the change that they wanted to see created. And I say, well, tell me about the picture that you see in your mind to create that change. And it's like a fog. I'm like, that was 100 great ideas. Can you settle on one? I mean, think about it. You need to have a crystal clear picture, a preferred picture of the future. I mean, think about it. If you ask Dr. Martin Luther King, he could tell you in a sentence what his picture was. I desire that people would not be judged by the color of the skin, but the content of their character. See, it was simple. He knew exactly what his picture was. I, I mean, you think about Steve Jobs. We want to create products, Apple. We want to create products people don't even know they want yet. You think about Andy Stanley, one of the leaders of the largest church. He says, we want to create a church that unchurched people love to come to. Got any sci-fi fans? Ridley Scott from The Aliens. He was pitching his show in the 19, late 1970s about this aliens. And they were like, what is this? And he says, it's Jaws in outer space. <laughs> he had a clear picture of the change that they want to see. I've heard it said this way. If you are riding on an elevator with someone and you've got 60 seconds, this change that you want to see either in your life or in the world or in your local community, can you paint that picture on an elevator ride? 
Because if it's not clear to you on an elevator ride, it'll never be clear to anyone that you want to help create that change with. So if you want to create change in your life or in the world or in the local community, we must have a clear picture of exactly what that looks like. Which leads me to number two, that I discovered that all great leaders, all great businesses, all great organizations have. They have a principal plan. Listen, I didn't come up with this. I didn't make this. I'm sure I read it somewhere. But listen to this. A dream without a plan is simply a wish. Nod your head. Come on. Go on. Everyone out there, nod your head. Turn to your neighbor and say, a dream without a plan is just a wish, right? You may have a dream to do something, but if you don't have a plan, then it is just a wish. And when we say principal plan, a plan is not an idea. A plan is actionable steps that you can take. They're behaviors and things that you can do. I mean, think about when Steve Jobs took over Apple. He went there and they had over 350 products. And he was listening to them we're all in the meeting talk about the different products. And he was going crazy and he finally said, stop it. And he went up to a whiteboard and he drew a quadrant and he said, a laptop on the left and desktop on the left. And then he cut it in half and he said, we're going to do laptops and desktops, and then we're going to do them for consumers, and we're going to do them for pros. Got it? And they went from 350 products down to 10. He had a plan. He settled his suit with Microsoft. He had a plan to execute the picture that he saw of Apple becoming back on the top of the industry. Do you want to see change in your life? Do you want to see change in your community's life? Do you have more than a dream? Do you have a plan that has actionable steps? And the reason that I use the term principal plan is because culture and technology are always changing. Anybody here been to the local Chick-fil-A? I love Chick-fil-A. And if you ever want to buy me a shake, you can do that. <laughs> I love Chick-fil-A. But you know what I've discovered in my research and my discovery? Chick-fil-A is not in the fast food industry. Chick-fil-A is not even in the chicken industry. Chick-fil-A is in the customer service industry. Their mission statement is to give value through service. And so, you know what, when the industry came out with this modern thing that you could drive through and you could talk to an electronic thing and someone could hear on the other side and they could prepare your food and give it through a drive through window, they moved with the times. But when that got backed up, if you've been through a Chick-fil-A lately, especially here in our community, they have living people standing outside with a headset taking your order to help it go faster. It is a principal plan because a dream without a plan is simply a wish. And a wish never created the change that you need, I need, or the world needs. Which leads me to the third thing that all great leaders, great businesses, and great organizations have, and that is passion. Howard Thurman said this, don't ask what the world needs, ask what makes you come alive, because the world needs alive people. <laughs> Think about this. In all my research, in all my reading, in all my life experiences, here's what I've dis discovered. Passion will not only set you up to succeed, it sets you apart. Think about it. When you have passion about something, they don't have to pay you for it. You would do it on your free time. You find yourself doing this regardless of what's going on in the world around you. You are passionate about this thing. When you are passionate, you will do the common in the uncommon way. You will do it excellently. Our first speaker talked about bringing pride back to America. That's passion, people. When you are passionate, you will do the little things well that matter and that stand out. And when you do the little things well and you make them stand out, you will be set apart. You will be set up for success. Not only does passion set you apart because of excellence, you do the common things in an uncommon manner, passion doesn't have to be taught. Passion is always caught. Think about it. As you scale in creating change in the community, or in your workplace, or, or in your community, or in your home, or in your family, or in your church, or in your soccer field, or in your school, wherever it is that you want to create change, you typically can't do it by yourself. And when you have passion, passion is caught, and it is transferable to other people who will scale with you, and then they will be passionate about what you're passionate about, because you're passionate, and you're on fire, and then they will begin to do the uncommon, I mean, the common things in uncommon ways. You'll be set apart, and you will be successful. Sometimes I think we ask the wrong question. What does the world need? Don't ask that. What, ask what makes you come alive. I can answer that easily. I love people. Does that come across yet? <laughs> passionate about people. I want to see people win at life. I care about them. Are you passionate? 
If you don't have a clear picture, if you don't have a principle plan and you're not passionate, you're not going to make it. You're not going to create change in your life. You're not going to create change in the community's life. Lastly, you need perseverance. Now, everyone, everyone smile. Everyone smile because I'm going to say something hard. Go ahead and smile. It's okay. You can smile. Sorry, smile. Okay. Now, because I'm about to tell you something hard that's going to make you not smile. Listen, if the problem that you want to solve could be solved overnight, it had already been solved. <laughs> this is why you need perseverance. If it could have already been solved, it would have been solved. Somebody would have done it because it was easy. When you want to create change, you will need perseverance. I mean, think of Edison and the light bulb. When he was asked about his thousand failures, he said, oh, I'm sorry, sir, I did not fail a thousand times. I took a thousand steps to figure out how to make the light bulb correctly. He needed perseverance. You think of Martin Luther King Jr. as he fought for civil rights, for human beings to act like human beings and to give dignity to other people. He was in jail and persecuted, and he eventually lost his life perseveres to solve a problem that would not be solved overnight. And it would be great if America would be a place where we'd give everyone dignity, wouldn't it? We think about Albert Einstein. Albert Einstein didn't even make it into the school he wanted to get into. One of his teachers said, you're slow. <laughs> think about Walt Disney, who created Disneyland and created what we love and we, we, has been frozen. Let it go, right? Walt Disney was fired by his newspaper that he worked for because they said he lacked imagination. <laughs> Steve Jobs was fired from the company that he built, and yet he persevered and he came back. You see, we'll need perseverance because sometimes there'll be obstacles outside of control. And I love what Dr. Henry Cloud said. He said, we never focus on the circumstances we can't control. We always will focus on the circumstances we can control. If you want to see and create change, you're going to run into problems. It is a problem that is not solved tonight, and you will need perseverance. So focus on what you can control. What behaviors or actions can you take that will lead to the results you want? Because if you don't want to run into problems, you'll never create change, because that's all creating change is, is solving a problem that someone hasn't yet solved. This is why creating change locally is important to all of us whether you're watching this on TEDx or whether you're here today, whether you desire to be an inventor or an entrepreneur or someone who creates a better place for the world or you just want to create change in the sphere that you go in. But I want to leave you with a tough question today. Are you going to be here today and be all raw rod and experience the feel good of the word create change or are you going to use the four Ps so that you can actually create the change that your life needs our community needs, and our world needs. Thank you for being a great audience.